Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and uh, this is a long overdue Q&A that um, my last giveaway, I got y'all guys and girls to ask me questions, and I'm going to answer them today. So, uh, let's get started. Hi! Oh, we got little Miss Stasa23 here, because some of these questions were for her, mm -hmm. and she's going to help me out through the process, and any time I get a chance to have her with me, mm -hmm. I'm going to take it. So let's get started. The first question is uh, by Nick Ricky, and his question was, what was the first knife you ever got? And whew, that, that was a long, long time ago, probably when I was seven or eight years old. I remember my dad got me a Swiss Army Boy Scout knife, and that's the one I remember. Uh, Next question is from S. Gilly. If I mess up some of your names, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not great at pronouncing names, and I'm going to do my best. Uh, his question was, what's the largest knife in your collection? Um, it would either be the Cold Steel 4 Max, or I think this one beats it by a little bit, is the Spyderco Friedmare K2. Well, I think it's a little bit bigger than the four max. So this that's one looks way bigger. Yeah, this one just is it's a lot chunkier and stuff. Um, and I'm guessing you mean folding knives. My largest fixed blade would probably be the uh, CRKT Chance in Hell. Next question. I can't read the name. It cut, it cut off when I printed it. Sorry about this. It says, "What's your favorite slip joint?" Um, it would be a battle between two. I would say probably my favorite user. Would be the uh, line steel roundhead, or one I started using recently is a little bit more exclusive knife. Is the GEC uh, Heartland clip clip designed by uh, the Apostle P, and uh, I love the Lanny's clips. My favorite design ever, and this is the closest I get to it so far. So there you go. All right, Bell. The next one is from Ernesto. Skur, I guess you'd say, and what's this one say? What? What the worst knife you own? What's, the, what, what's what? the worst knife I own? Uh, it's hard to remember because I don't keep them if they're they're it's, terrible. It's a pink knife. <laughs> yeah, but it's probably I got the CRKT shrimp, I think it's called, and I bought it for her because it has pink scales on it. And we're gonna call it the worst knife because that thing does not lock up. It's all out of whack and it's just dangerous. But I, any of the gas station knives I bought as a kid, I would, I would classify those as the worst knife. You got red stuff all in your hand. All right, um, the next one is from Lance uh, Salyer. It says, when considering a knife purchase, is there any one thing that you consider an automatic, no non-negotiable, no can do, refuse to have? Well, after my accident, my hands are nice and beat up, and I would have to say if it had really rough jimping, especially if it's a flipper, and this one doesn't have it, but if it had jimping behind here, destroying my finger every time I flip, but any kind of very, very harsh jimping, uh, I'd probably say it's a no-go, and if it had absolutely terrible action, that'd be a no-go as well. All okay, right, um, next one's from Benjamin Poirier. Read that one. Do Do you currently work? And will you ever be able to go back to work? Um. Currently, I don't work. Uh, I was injured in a bad accident in 2015. I have not went back to work since. Um, but he has a nice business. <laughs> well, YouTube. And um, and I, I don't know. Uh, that's going to be up to my doctors and uh, my physical state. So as of right now, I'm not too sure. Um, Ramon. Verse. Stay. Verse <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Um, what is your favorite fellow, fellow knife review YouTube, YouTube channel? channel? Um, I don't really have a favorite. I I'm just gonna read off a few that I watch pretty frequently. Um, but if I forget one of you guys, don't don't take this to offense. My memory's terrible. 
just off the top of my head, uh, love Cedric and Ada Outdoors. Awesome guy, does some cool tests. Just love his channel. JT's Knife Life, Zelric, Patty's yeah. Potato Pillars, Fun with Knives, Slicey Dicey, um, and I'm sure there's a lot more. Nick Shabazz, I, I, watch, I watch pretty much all the, the, the uh, knife review channels, but uh, those are just ones I've thought up off, my head, off the top of my head. Uh, the next one is from John Ballinger. What is your favorite knife? My favorite knife? Um, I don't really have a favorite knife. Uh, I'm a, a knife enthusiast. I love all knives. But I guess if I had to pick right now, it would be between the Booze Blade Smoke just because of its uh, nice compact size and weight, easy in and out of my pockets, and I can carry with my gym shorts like I have to wear most of the time. Hold on, baby. And then the next one probably be the Benchmade Anthem for the same reasons. Yeah, you can go ahead. She wants to show y'all something. Don't bend it up, though, okay? Got this from African Custom Knives. When you buy a knife, sometimes they give you this. Just show it. It's fine. There you go. She wanted to show you guys that. It's made out of wires. Yeah, it's copper wire. Okay, Belle, you want to read the next one? Yeah. Next one's from Max Mouton. Uh, what was the... A accident. accident if you don't mind me asking and I okay I don't mind I don't mind talking about that I will keep it kind of short with my daughter right here um, back in 2015 I worked for a uh, industrial chemical plant we made synthetic diesel naphtha LPG <laughs> and uh, I was working I was working on a valve that didn't close all the way. It had 1,800 pounds of hydrogen behind it. And when I opened the valve, uh, friction caused the fire and an explosion happened. And uh, 1,800 pounds of hydrogen blew up. And uh, that's all I can talk about right now. Alrighty. Um, if you hear my dogs in the background, I'm sorry. They just want to be part of the video. Uh, the next one's from Fort Worth Glock Guy. Oh. What's your favorite memory of YouTube so far? What's my favorite memory of YouTube so far? Doing um, YouTube videos with his daughter. Yeah, that that's definitely a huge, huge plus. I love when she sits down and, and enjoys my hobby with me. Uh, any chance I get with her, you know, I definitely take it. And as far as the community goes, I'd have to say getting my first um, shout out on YouTube from Chad, the fat man, uh, that just means a lot to me and uh, that's, that's a memory that I won't ever forget. I really wish Chad would start doing videos again. Awesome guy, super funny and I love his videos. So, um, the next one's from Uncle Cal. Um, do you carry a backup self-defense tool in case you can't? Use your firearm. Use your firearm. Fire uh, the answer that's no, because uh, I don't really uh, include a knife as a backup self-defense tool. If if it meant life or death, sure I would use it, but I'm not trained to use one, and more than likely it would get used on me before I used it on them. So, like I said, last ditch, yeah, I would use what's in my pockets or around my neck. So there you go. Um, let's see. Dwight Doucette. What is your favorite knife marker? Maker. Knife, maker. What's my favorite knife maker? Um, Probably Zelric. <laughs> that's, a, that's a channel, baby. <laughs> okay, um, I would have to say it would, it would probably have to be Spyderco, mainly because they use a variety of blade steels. They're not scared to try a new blade steel, which I know, you know, is a big risk. Not knowing whether you know it's gonna happen, if, if it's gonna work out or not, and I also like the fact that they they grind their knives to be performers. And a knife is made to cut; they grind them nice and thin, and I, and I like that a lot. So I have probably more spider codes than anything in the collection. All right, uh, I can't. The name got cut off on this one, but here you go, Belle. Um, do do you, do you freehand? Sharpen and what do you it, use? And what do you use? Um, I do a little freehand sharpening uh, 
And when I do, I have a coarse, a medium, and a fine DMT uh, bench stone. Uh, I also, if I'm if I'm in a pinch, I will use my work sharp uh, field sharpener. That thing is very very nice. I will be doing a review of that here soon. And um, probably my most used, which I guess it's not. Never mind, that's not a free hand. I would say it's Prodigo Sharp Maker, but that is a fixed angle system. So yeah, I, I use a little bit of DMT uh, DMT bench stones field. Work sharp field, sharp field sharpener and uh, some hand straps. All right, the next one's from Hooty Who Two. I love this one. Is your daughter a unicorn? <laughs> what do you guys think? I mean, look, <laughs> she's been waiting for the whole video to do that, and I don't blame her. <laughs> All right, the next one is from Wade Page. There you go. What are your favorite budgeted and premium premium blade steels and why? My favorite budget and premium blade steels and why. Um, in the budget side, I'd have to say 14C, 28N, D2, 440C, and I guess in some cases you could, don't do that baby, in some cases you could include CPM 154 because they do have some on the lower end knives with that. You know, that's that's kind of teeter-tottering. And on the higher end premium, I would say M390 are the equivalents to that. Uh, 3V and LC200N. Uh, on the budget end, uh, I, D2, you know, I like that one a lot. It's it's a tough steel. It holds a good edge. It's a little bit harder to sharpen. 14C28N and 440C, those two are a lot easier to sharpen. As long as they're heat treated right, they they're a good performance steel. Much 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 rather than them than HCR or those type of steels. Uh, M390, I absolutely love it. It's a great performer. Holds an edge for an extremely long time, and with the wicked edge, it's not that hard hard to sharpen. 3V, it's my go-to tough steel. It's it's got a great balance between toughness. And edge holding and you know all it, but it is something you have to keep up and the LC 200 in here lately has really really been uh, surprising me it holds a really really good edge and in the south we got to worry about corrosion a lot and the LC 200 in is now a part of the salt series for spider Co. so it it doesn't rust pretty much I mean I, I haven't don't worry about that baby. I haven't had it rust on me at all no spotting or nothing so there you go EDC with Aaron. Baby, don't do that. You start barking. EDC with Aaron. Uh, what is your favorite knife in each category? Your flipper, front flipper, thumb stud, blade hole, or cutout, and slip joint. Let's see. My favorite flipper. I'm not a huge flipper guy, but as of right now, this changes, you know, daily. And I would have to say the Curtis F3 because the action is just absolutely outstanding. It just has recoil on it. Um, my favorite fl front flipper, I would hands down the Booze Blade Smoke. The action is incredible. Um, it's it, it, it's not hard to do. Some front flippers, you really have to think about it. I can do this one in all kinds of different manners, and it's just a nice one. Um, thumb stud, currently that'd be my Benchmade Anthem, just because it's super smooth, very very easy to actuate and uh, just great all around knife. Uh, blade hole or cutout, it would either be between my Spyco Spidey Chef, that's the one with the LC200N. Uh, this, this knife has just been really impressing me. And then my go-to beater would be the uh, Spyco Delica in Hat 40. Uh, it's another steel that has really been impressing me. It scratches very easily, but it holds a good edge and it's it's been extremely easy to keep sharp. Uh, it, it takes well to straps, and I can touch it up with a Spyco Sharp Maker, get it hair shaving sharp very quickly. Um, next question from JB JCB67. He's a he's a commenter on all my videos, pretty much. How's it going, man? Uh, do you keep any knives that are special that you would never sell? And yes, uh, I'm sure pretty much all of us do. And 
any knives that have been gifted to me, any knives that have sentimental value that have been handed down from me to my, from my grandparents, my parents, anything like that, those knives don't go anywhere. They will never be sold. So there you go. Uh, Brandon Sheehan, uh, I love the four max. Can you say, in your opinion, is it worth the 300 plus price tag? that it goes for, or do you think it's overpriced? And he's talking about this knife right here. Uh, I'll say this, okay? If you get one that has no lock bar issues, which this one had lock bar issues, it got sent back to Andrew Demko and he tuned it up. If you can get one without any lock bar issues, anything like that, I'll say it's definitely worth $300 because you're getting a lot of 20 CV steel, tons of it. A lot of titanium, the liners of titanium, and it's a huge knife. Uh, go watch my uh, destruction video on this. It can take a beating and it, it, it's it's not gonna hurt this knife whatsoever. So, yeah, that's a tough question. If if, if, if it's made properly, yes, no doubt about it. But, um, you know, with some of the issues that they had on the first few batches, I don't know how the, the you know, Italian made ones are or anything like that, so, I, I can't really answer on that. <clears throat> um, next one's from Johnny Katana. How long have you lived in Louisiana? Um, I lived in Louisiana my whole life, 37 years. Uh, next one's from Edward uh, Ferdin. If you can go anywhere or do anything you wanted, what would you do? I would probably take my entire family to Italy. That's where my ancestors are from. And uh, got there's I have family in Italy, so I would I would probably go there. Um, next one's from M F Guido. Uh, what's your favorite knife to use in the kitchen? Uh, I would have to say my most used knife in the kitchen is a Spyderco Endura and VG10 steel. Uh, it's a great slicer. And whenever I, when I was working at the plant, that's what I kept in my locker. It's just a good slicer and it's easy to touch up. But here recently, I would have to say I've been using the Spyderco Spidey Chef because I don't have to worry about any kind of corrosion or anything. And it's got great performance. And the way my hand sits on things, my knuckles are below the blade, so I'm not banging my knuckles on the uh, countertop. Um, let's see. Next one's Anthony Zuletta. It says, what's your favorite blade shape and why? Uh, my favorite blade shape would have to be the uh, a clip point. A Bowie clip point. That clip point or Persian style. I like upsweep blades. But the Bowie uh, is probably my favorite. It's got great versatility. Let's see, this is another one right here. I like this up sweep. You got this flat portion down here, and then you got this this nice um, nice up sweep right there, belly. Just a, a great all around use of the knife. Um, and I think what really attracted me to that style is when I was little, my brothers used to carry Bowie blades and stuff when we would go hunting. And that's just when I think of a knife, I think like the Buck 110. That's that's what I think of when I think of the epitome of a knife. So there you go. The next one is from Andrew Greiner. Uh, first knife that you got that got you into collecting. Well, I've been collecting since I was a kid, so I guess if, if you were gonna say that knife, that the first knife I got as a kid that kinda made me like knives, my dad got me a Buck 55, I think it's 055 or whatever, it's the small version of the Buck 110. And uh, that was very nostalgic knife to me. And then, I think what really got me into collecting when I was a teenager, I got a Cold Steel Medium Voyager, and that was like the first knife that I bought that was over 50 bucks. I bought it with my own money, and that, that, that did it for me. I was, I was looking for the next best thing, or the next, you know, what I was into at that time. I think, and at that time, I was into the more hard use, you know, tactical style, I don't know, and hunting too, because I did a lot of hunting. The next question is from Joe Bro Knives. How did you get into knives? Uh, living in South Louisiana, all my brothers, including me, we hunted all the time, and 
I remember as a kid, my brother, both my brothers having, like I said, a, a Bowie blade. It was a buck, uh, 119, I think it is, on their side. Um, and watching them use those knives and stuff, I, I couldn't wait till I was old enough to get one. And as soon as I got one, I had a lot of use for knives, especially when I was hunting, being out in the woods and... That just sparked my love for knives. I've always loved them. I love them, as, love them as a tool. I love them as a piece of art, functional art. I love everything about knives. All right. Um, the next one's from Javier, Javier Garza. While utilizing your knives, have you ever chipped a blade or broken a blade? If so, how did it feel? Yeah, I've chipped. I've, I've broken the tips off of many knives. I've snapped blades on knives. And it sucked. Of course, it sucked. You know, I don't. Nobody ever wants to break their knife unless unless you're trying to do a destruction video or something. But yeah, it never feels good. Uh, Vinny Nero asks, "What's your favorite EDC steel? If you take sharpening into consideration, also, do you have any carbon steels you carry?" Well, I own a Wicked Edge, so sharpening M390s. You know, what I, that's my go-to steel. It's not hard to sharpen on on the uh, Wicked Edge, but if I didn't have the Wicked Edge, I'd probably say, just from my use and experience of sharpening it, I would say the Hap 40, the, the Spyderco Delicate Hap 40. Uh, my sharpening experience on this is very easy to sharpen and easy to touch up on the Spyderco Sharp Maker, so that's a win-win. Uh, Kyle Burton asked, if you had to cut your collection down to five knives, what would it be? Oh, that's a terrible question. Uh, let's see, I'd say maybe the Benchmade Anthem, because they have a great warranty system, if I break it, they can fix it, and it's an awesome knife. Uh, my Chris Reeve, uh, in Singo and Kosi Large, they have another awesome warranty, it's an awesome knife, and awesome tolerances. Uh... Right now, it'd be the Booze Blade Smoke. It just fits into my EDC, EDC system very, very nicely. Uh, I'd say the Curtis F3 for a harder to use flipper. And, you know, to have a slip joint around for the sheeple out there, I'd have to say either the, the round head or for warranty purposes, my Benchmade proper. Toxic Flipper asks, what is the best way to sharpen knives? What is your... Oh, and I'm sorry, the last question too, he said, do you have any carbon steel you carry? Yes, I got a few knives in 1095, and I carry them every now and again. Uh, what is the best way to sharpen, and what is your favorite blade steel for hard use? Uh, best way to sharpen is what way works best for you. Um... You know, for me, it's using the Wicked Edge. It's a fixed angled system. It it's, uh, takes a lot of the guessing work out and it takes a lot of skill out. But um, if you know how to freehand sharpen, I think that's an incredible way to sharpen because you control what you're doing. You know, and there's a lot of uh, variables that you can get around when you're freehand sharpening. And that's a skill that I'm definitely practicing on. And, you know, if you can, if you can learn how to do that, I'd definitely say go with that. It's a lot cheaper that way too. It could be expensive, don't worry, but cheaper to start out. And he said, favorite blade steel for hard use. Um, and these are the only, the only reason I'm saying these because it's the only ones I have experience with. And my favorite is CPM 3V. I have a few knives in 3V. Excellent all around blade steel. Keeps a good edge and super, super tough. Um, CPM 10V is another great one. And I don't have it in front of me, but uh, CPM M4, but M4 for me is just a beast to sharpen. Uh, it's just hard to make sure you deburr it, make sure you don't have a wire edge on there. So that's why I picked those other two. They're a lot, this is, the 3V is a lot easier for me to sharpen, so I'd have to say 3V. Uh, CRF 450R Bullet David. Have you gotten your MaxMed back from... Or a replacement. How's your overall experience with the steel bin? Yes, I got it back. And the new one, I haven't had any chipping issues whatsoever. It's an awesome steel. I will say it takes a lot of maintenance. You definitely have to keep it oiled unless you don't mind it spotting or rusting or patinaing. I don't mind the patina. I just don't want rust spots. So I do keep it oiled. 
Um, and it, it's it's an amazing steel. Keeps an edge for an incredibly long time. All right, I'm gonna answer a few more and then I'll do a second part uh, at another day. Um, uh, da, da, da. If I miss a question or something like that, I'm sorry. Some of them get cut off. Uh, Blitz BBFF1, I think it is. What's your solution for freeing up Loctite knife screws? First off, I try a hair dryer on the pivot for about five or ten minutes. If that doesn't work, I pull out my soldering iron, put it on the pivot until you feel it get hot on the opposite side. Somebody said that on a video and that works well. The soldering iron usually always does a trick, but I usually pull out my hair dryer first, just easier and quicker. Um, let's see. Uh, what was your favorite knife that came out in 2017? I, I would have to say probably the Benchmade Anthem. And yeah, I'd say Benchmade Anthem. And I will say, I was able to handpick these with their QC. I, I don't know if that would be the same if I just bought this from a retailer because it has some QC issues. So I would say if you get this knife, try to get it in hand before you buy that. Um, what style what style and size knife do you tend to gravitate towards carrying? Um, style, I guess, I'm guessing you're asking uh, tie or carbon fiber frame lock, usually what I gravitate toward. Um, my sweet spot is around 3.5 inch blade or smaller, but usually that sweet spot is 3.5 inch. It's, it's not a huge blade that's going to scare a ton of people and it's legal in my area. And I usually like anywhere from 3 to 4 ounces is also my sweet spot, especially now that i got to wear lightweight clothing. Um, uh, Troy... Oh, good job, baby. Yeah, no. Troy Mackey, how did you build such a great collection and where did you get all the knowledge you have on knives? Well, I appreciate that, Troy. Um, I've been collecting knives for probably about 17 years, and I would say seven years I've been really getting into collecting, especially, you know, once you start making mm -hmm. your own money and you're not, you know, getting money from your mom or dad or anything like that, or when you... You have money left over from paying your car note or whatever you pay. And I'd say in the last seven years, I've really, you know, been hitting it kind of hard. And that's how I got on my knives, you know. Uh, many years of collecting and trading and uh, saving up. I, I call it my knife fund. I save up, you know, if I have a certain knife I want, I save for it. And maybe sell some knives. And I have trouble doing that sometimes. But selling knives, too. The knowledge I got was from reading a lot about knives, reading on forums, watching tons of videos, and here recently, going to Blade Show last year, I picked so many custom knife makers' brains. And research. And, well, and research, yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, Dirk Pinkerton and Alan Fultz, thanks to both of them, they sat down and talked with me for hours at Blade Show last year, and I really picked their brain because I, I want to be a knife maker one day, mm -hmm. and I was, you know, picking their brain on that and picking their brain on the industry and how things are going, and I'm just fascinated about everything to do with knives. I just, I have a true passion for knives. It's my outlet, especially now to escape when I'm in a lot of pain. I can kind of block everything out, watch some videos, do some YouTube videos, and that's keeps me sane up up top. It helps a lot with PTSD. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, from Marshmallow123. <laughs> my wife, my, my daughter likes that. Would you like to see more big companies dabbling in the traditional slip joint knife category in 2018? Yes, I, I'd definitely like to see that. And I think that movement is definitely happening right now. I mean, you got uh, Line Steel doing it, Benchmade doing it, um, uh, Kaiser with the, the, what is it, Zip Slip or whatever, the Michael Vagnino, I think, design, slip joint. Uh, I would love to see uh, all these companies take on a modern traditional. Um, not so much just your pure traditionals, which I have nothing, nothing against your pure traditionals, they, they've been around forever, 
but your modern traditionals I, they appeal to me a little bit more that's just that's just me and I would I would love to see you know Spyderco well Spyderco's got one I would like to see you know all these these awesome companies take on modern traditionals and start really you know having a, a market there for them you know a category of their knives Spyderco I'd like to see a, a, a lot more you know, spider toes because they have such that that great geometry. I think they could do great. I have the roadie. You know, there there that was one of them. Um, let's see, Dean W O six. Do you own carry guns? If so, what do you own? I I'll just say yes. There, that's something that it's my business. I don't want anybody else knowing. That's just that's just me. I'm not a gun channel, so I do own them, and that's that. All right, TT Mac, what knife did you not like but learn to love? Uh, that was a hard one. I would have to say, I guess, the Ontario Rat Model 1. I just didn't think it was that that aesthetically pleasing. But I remember when I got my first one in All State, I used it at work a lot, and I used it when <clears throat> I went camping, and it made a great camping, great hard-use beater. And now that they got them in D2 Steel, just an excellent... EDC beater knife, you know, uh, I didn't feel bad if I would have broken it I wouldn't have felt bad. I think my first time I broke the tip on it. It didn't I didn't feel bad as a $30 knife. I can just replace it All right, I'm gonna answer two more and we'll call it quits um, What's your favorite spider co it would either be the Spidey chef I know I own the, the Bowie as well. I, I love the Bowie, but just for me, the uh, Spidey Chef just appeals a little bit more to me, and I would have to say my EDC, I mean my Beater Spider Co would be the Hat Forty Delica. So those two would have to be my favorite Spider Co's at this moment. Um, Tay Ten Ninety Three, could you tell us? Well, I already talked about my accident. If you have any questions about that comments or anything like that just leave them down below I'll answer your questions my daughter's right here I don't want to get into any detail um, yellow 32 uh, I've never been to blade show or any show like that what is it like and what is the general mood uh, last year was my first year going to blade show I've been to many of gun and knife shows in my area nothing to the extent of blade show I will say going to blade show the first time is super overwhelming and awesome. The, it is so much energy in there. I ran around like a kid at Christmas, going from table to table. I told my friends, look, just don't worry about me. I'll come find y'all when I'm done. And uh, this year, I'm, I'm hoping to go with more of, a, of an idea of where I want to go. And also, not to mention, I was not just going to try to see all the knives I wanted to see. I was also, after I would see them, I'd go back and try to shoot content for you guys and girls the ones that couldn't make it to the show so it's it's a tough juggling act and this year it, it there some stuff if everything goes right it could be even tougher for me this year but i would definitely say if you get the chance go because it wasn't all about the knives i was so happy to meet all these people and this year i really want to meet a lot of you guys if you're going to blade show let me do, know down in the comment section and uh if you show me a picture of what you look like or have a spot that y'all want to meet up at, I'll definitely try to do that. You can text me, I mean, or you can uh, message me, email me, and uh, we'll definitely try to do that. Uh, but I would say there's a lot of energy at Blade Show. It is a little overwhelming. It's, it's kind of like the Toys R Us of knives, uh, but it was very exciting and something I hope I can do every year from here on out. Uh, I said that was the last, but let's just finish the page. Um, what do you prefer more? Well, Francesco Medina, maybe? It kind of cut his name off. What do you prefer more, plain edge or serrated? Absolutely plain edge, hands down, all day, every day, twice on Sunday. I have no use for a serrated edge. I know there's a place for a serrated edge. If I, if I worked at a rope factory or on a ship where I was cutting a lot of rope, then I might, you know, lean toward a, a, a serrated knife, but I have absolutely no use for them. So uh, anything with any kind of serrations, that's that's also a negative no-go, not going to happen. So let's, let's call it a wrap right there. I'll do a part two 
especially if y'all like this and I'll try to do more Q and A's later down the road. Uh, I enjoy talking with you guys, like to answer you guys questions so y'all can know me in a little bit more of a personal setting mm -hmm. and come sit right here, baby. And my daughter, my beautiful daughter, uh, come and she's on we side of me. <laughs> she was on side of me and I love, love doing stuff like this whenever she takes part in it. So hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day and be looking for part two. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss stuff like this. I mean, you now. got my beautiful little daughter right here. Now. She's so cute. Hit that subscribe button. Now. And if you like this video, give it a big now. thumbs up. Now. Spread to all your friends and family and all your social networks. And I'll see you next time. Peace.